Hello everyone, Professor Dustin here, and in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to align and stack images in Astro Image J if you do not have a WCS. So WCS, just as a quick review, is World Coordinate System. So the World Coordinate System is basically taking the coordinate system of the chip or the image, which is in pixels, right, X and Y pixels, and converting it to the sky coordinates, right ascension declination. So this, when you have this map, between the pixel coordinates and the sky coordinates, you can say, okay, I have a sky coordinate in real right ascension declination, and I can map it directly to where on the pixel I am, which star I'm looking at on the pixel. The way the computer does that is it looks at the star image and does like a computer search for where can it find that set of stars and then assigns it with a right ascension declination. It's a very non-trivial procedure. It takes into lots of things like where the telescope thinks it's pointing, how curved the field is, because of course the, the um, image is flat, the, 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 the surface of the CCD is flat, but the sky is actually curved, so it actually smooshes it out a little bit. So it's actually pretty complicated. Sometimes that process fails, particularly when we use eye telescope, it, asks, it tries to find the WCS, but sometimes it just doesn't work. But we still need to be able to use those images, even if the WCS doesn't work. So let me show you quickly what the WCS um, looks like when it fails. Uh, so here's just an image of some random supernova, which I know the C WCS failed for one reason or another. Uh, you can see that what I've done is unzipped it. Um, you know, I had the the date here is it was the zip file that I downloaded, and I unzipped it, and then I've removed all those extra files like the raw and the JPEGs and stuff like that. So now I'm I'm left with just the supernova. You can see we have two filters, U and I, and it looks like we have like five or six images in each, and we want to stack those. So first, I'm just going to open up one of them. I'm going to use I because usually the I images are brighter than the U images. So this is what this image looks like. Um, and the first thing to do is to tell if you have a WCS. Now what's a little bit tricky here is my system actually has a bug in it, which is that there's supposed to be a bar right up here. And you can see it's actually being covered a little bit by the rest of the windows. That's some kind of Linux problem. I haven't seen that. That actually is not true in all Linux systems. You will probably see like a bar up here. And actually in that bar, it will say, no WCS in that exact location. That's how you know there is no WCS. Now, um, you can also tell there's no WCS because as I move around the image, you can see that we have image X, image Y, value and peak images. So here, and actually you can see the fits X and fits Y. So those are actually the coordinates of the image. And you see, can see as I move around, they are actually changing as you go. So uh, those are actually the, the uh, coordinates of the pixel itself. That's why they're in X and Y. But you can see the right ascension declination. Um, fields are left blank. That's another sign that we do not have a WCS at all. So, you know, either look here or do this little trick. You can tell there's no WCS here. So when we do our normal stacking thing, the image is not going to know where to stack because normally we want to stack with the right ascension declination matching up because those are also, uh, those are the real physical coordinates. But of course, the images here are of the same place in the sky. So let me um, do this. Let me open all of the images in a particular filter. Again, let's do the I filter. So I'm going to uh, sort so the file name contains I. You can see the total number of images is 10, but using the uh, file name contains filter, I've gotten the images number of images down to five. So now I open all five of them. And this becomes even more of a pain because there's more information stuck up here that I can't actually see, including there should be like a one out of five here. But I can use my uh, arrow keys as well as just this clicking thing down here to go through the images. You can see the images are very clearly of the same place in the sky, right? They shift around a little bit, but it's the same image. So a couple of different things you can do to stack these. The first thing is you can actually try to get a WCS by doing WCS and then plate solve using astronomy.net. Um, I'm not going to do this in this video because often if it failed for eye telescope, it will fail for us again. But basically what you do is you click constrained sky location, put the center of the image, center RA and center deck, and then push start. Make sure that it's written to skip images with WCS autosave. And you might be able to pull a WCS out of um, uh, what, what's going on here, which is nova.astronomy.net. I can give more information about this. Maybe I'll make another video about it. But I also kind of want to do the case when there's nothing we can do to get the WCS. So you might be able to start this process and maybe the WCS will be copied. But, you know, allegedly the iTelescope did this process already and it didn't work. So there's something about these images. It looks a little bit strange. There's nothing that jumps out at me at this image that why it should fail. But whatever, it did fail. So, okay. So how, what are we going to do if we have absolutely no WCS? Maybe we've tried to grab one from, from Nova and it hasn't worked. 
we still can align these images to the best of our ability and usually it's good enough for our purposes. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to somewhere, process, process. We have this align stack using WCS or apertures. So normally we would want to use the WCS because it kind of does it automatically, but aligning with apertures is a pretty easy thing to do as well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick the stack aligner, first slice, last slice. You actually wanna select the aperture size first. So let me actually do that then make sure that my aperture size, it, my aperture size looks fine. You can see on the image, it's got like little blue circles. I can change it by changing the size of the apertures like this. Uh, what I have now is probably fine. You can see they're a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the computer some location of some stars to use to get the, to align the thing. So align stack using the WCS or apertures, make sure all the stacks are included one to five. This is the radius of the apertures I just set. So that's, I have to be a little bit careful when I unclick all these things. So you can't use RA and DEC to locate the initial aperture positions. We don't have them. I don't want to use the previous three apertures because I'm just starting from, uh, from like new. So use single step mode is what I think I want. And I don't think I want to allow aperture changes. So I'm going to try doing it just like this. So just this third option here is selected. When that's selected, it should allow us to place apertures as we go. And I think what we'll only have to select all the apertures on the first image. I can't quite remember, so we're going to try. Um, and I always want to show help panel just in case I get stuck. So just having those two things checked, I'm going to click OK. And then you can see the first thing, left click to add target aperture T1. So basically, you want to use pretty bright stars. So I'm going to click this guy as my first star. And hopefully it's just centroid it. So if I don't quite click in exactly the right place, hopefully it will actually go, you know, move around so it's exactly centered. And you can see the instructions changed. Add to reference star aperture C2 or delete aperture. So I'm going to just add a few more, you know, like three to five is kind of probably good practice. See these like bleeding? You kind of want to avoid the bleeding because sometimes that can screw up the centroiding. So there's another one. Let's do one. That might be a little bit bright, but this is kind of just a test. Let's try that guy. Let's try one of these guys. So that's four, that might be enough. Okay, so you can see to move on to the next image, you go up here and push enter, finalize ap aperture selection, align image and move to the next image. So back selecting over here, I'm gonna push enter. Didn't work, so I hadn't selected it, push enter. Okay, so it's now gone on to the next image. Now I'm gonna click the first star that I placed last time, you can see in the structure, and by star, identify star one to place all apertures. So the first star I clicked was this one, I think. Bam, and they auto-populated. And then they shifted to the next image. Again, I'm gonna click the first star, auto-populated, and it should shift to the next image. I'm gonna keep doing this for all five. So this is fine if you have like four or five images, but of course, if you have 30 images, this is completely inappropriate. So um, that's when you really wanna think more about getting a good WCS. Okay. Did all uh, five images, virtual stack alignment complete, align uh, images are saved in the subdirectory on the line, uh, align, cool. So I'm gonna close that. I think I'm gonna close my stack here. And then I'm going to open image sequence. You can see I have a new directory called aligned. Go in there and I'm gonna open uh, all five images now hopefully are aligned. So I don't have to do any filtering because I only have five images in there. <clears throat> And now I should be able to use the arrow keys to sort through the, oh, you can see they're just dead on top of each other. So as I flip through them, you can see there's some motion, which are the like cosmic ray hits or hot, hot pixels and stuff like that. But the stars themselves, including the cute little galaxy down here is completely uh, stationary. So now we can stack them. So I should go up to process and then combine stack slices into a single image. Uh, you probably want to do a sum here. Remember, there's these things like if you do uh, median, you'll kind of get rid of those cosmic ray hits. But if we want to do science, we basically want to add up all the counts we have. So sum slices, click OK, and it should pop out with another, with a summed image. And you can't tell, but well, no, maybe you can tell because the counts now are really high. So as I, you added up all the pixels for the star, you can see that the value up here is like 100,000. So I'm looking at the value right here on my, under my cursor. I can like go, you know, so the highest one is uh, 300,000. So I can actually go back to the other images and like look at them and say that the images for each individual one was like 60,000. That means the star was actually saturated probably. But in any case, you can see that we've actually summed all the images. What I usually do is I then, and, and of course we still don't have a WCS. So when you stack images, you typically actually lose the WCS. We never had one, so we still don't have one. So we still have no, RA and deck to go on, but at least now we have a nice stacked image. In principle, you could run this now through the WCS finder 
And actually that might be an easier way to get a WCS if we really needed it. But for our purposes, now we are just trying to find the you know, uh, signal to noise ratio of something in a stacked image, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, so I'm gonna save this. Usually what I do is I save it as um, some aligned and then I just stick like an eye on it to make sure that I know which filter it is. The name sum aligned tells me what kind of stacking I did because I want to make sure I remember that it was summed. It was aligned and that's the eye filter. So anyway, that's how you get, that's how you stack images using, um, if you don't have a WCS, it's not the optimal way to do it, but you can see it's actually not that bad. And it does work in nearly every case, as long as you select stars that are reasonably bright. You get cool things like here's some kind of, I don't know, probably an asteroid that's moving relatively slowly, right? That's not a satellite. These are pretty long images. Sorry, I'm getting off track. That was moving slow enough, so it might be some kind of asteroid, which is kind of interesting. Maybe we should investigate that. Uh, anyway, so I think that's all I have to say. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful. Um, and let me know if you have any questions or comments below or talk to me in person. Thanks. Bye.